The idea of abstraction is a big idea also that we need to talk about. We haven't discussed this explicitly so far in the units because it's a topic that is cross-cutting across all the other big ideas. So we have a few things to say about that at the end of this particular lesson. To think about the idea of abstraction, we asked you to read the paper by Jeff Kramer called Is Abstraction Key to Computing? So in that paper, Kramer asks the following question. He asks, why is it that some software engineers and computer scientists are able to produce clear, elegant designs and programs while others cannot? And we also see this with students. Why are some students able to excel in computer science and some not? And you know, the questions asked in this paper are about what, what is the property that um, helps determine that and is that teachable? And how can we determine um, how to uh, notice how students might be able to excel in computing? So uh, Kramer discusses the idea of about abstraction and the ability for humans to, to perform abstraction in terms of computing goals and, and, and um, knowledge by referring back to Piaget. So he notes that there were four stages of development in Piaget's hierarchy. The first two being from newborns to age around seven that dealt with motor skills and very early language and, and basic symbol manipulation ideas. And then that moved into a skill from seven to 12 year olds that was a grasp of conservation of matter, causality, and being able to classify things from concrete objects. The next thing was formal operation, and that was from adolescence to adulthood. And that was a, a, a more deeper ability of development, and it was marked by an ability to think abstractly and to perform more detailed symbol manipulation. One of the interesting things that Kramer mentioned in the PGA study is that only 30% to 35% of adolescents or even adults conquer this fourth stage. And this is where the ability to do abstraction lies. Uh, so if, if there are things that can be learned from these early studies, uh, the ability to abstract is something that some people may not actually attain. And then the, the question, the side issue for this course is how do you teach this and, and can it be learned if, if it wasn't acquired uh, prior in prior times? So we'll look at a few definitions of abstraction and um, some examples of abstraction as well in the rest of this lesson. But to me, the, the idea of abstraction is a means of achieving stepwise refinement to highlight or accentuate details of some kind of phenomena, and by implication, suppressing those things that are not required. So by stepwise refinement, what I mean is starting from the most basic kind of uh, idea of, of a concept and then getting into more detail. So almost like an onion peel, starting from the outside and then be, being able to peel off different layers or skins to get down to more levels of detail. So we can describe a very high level system using abstraction and then through stepwise refinement gradually explore the details. So abstraction is really helpful so by hiding those details we don't get bogged down by them at each new layer. So there are several common examples that we'd like to talk about and when I introduce abstraction to my class I use these real world examples before I even talk about computing ideas with abstraction so that students can get that idea in their mind and then they can apply that to the more concrete expressions in computing. So I ask students to think about simple things like braking in a car. So if you press on the braking mechanism on your car, it's a really simple abstraction. I just press in to turn the brakes on and I release for the brakes to stop working. So just being able to push on a brake pedal is a really simple abstraction, but think about even in a modern car, all the different things that happen when you're braking. So there's all kind of electronics happening, software, analog brake systems, all that comes into play and it's a lot of complexity but it's hidden from you as a driver by just that simple abstraction of pressing on the brake. Very similar to turning lights on in a room. I mean, even a, a young infant knows, uh, knows how to turn lights on and is obsessed with that kind of idea when they first learn about it. You just flip the light switch and the lights go on or off. So might maybe up would be lights are on and down lights are off. And just simply doing that behavior up and, up and down will turn the lights on and off. But underneath the the system, say, in the room where that light's being displayed is a lot of complexities. There's all kind of wires leading everywhere that's hidden behind the, the, the wall. So in, in a sense, the wall is kind of like an abstraction filter here where we can, can hide the complexities. So abstraction also deals with an interface. So I need to have a really clean and nice interface. So you can have really poor interfaces. We'll talk about that on an upcoming slide. 
And um, you know, the ability to define that interface helps the user with the abstraction. So one thing you might want to do when you introduce the concept of abstraction to your students is ask them to uh, meet up in some kind of cooperative learning structure and discuss examples that they may have observed of the concept of abstraction in their everyday life from you know, different disciplines or medical fields or just things that happen daily in their lives. So an example here is from a paper in 1972 by a, a famous software engineer named David Parnas, and he was just using this example of a steering wheel as an abstraction. So there are two alternatives. Imagine that you had an ability to drive a car and you use the example of you know, previous horse-driven carriages and for every tire you have a rope. And the way that you drove your car is by pulling on all four of the ropes. And that would be an abstraction. It may not be a very good one, but it would allow you to do all kinds of interesting things and some of them even illegal or not desired. For example, I could pull my tires in a way that all the wheels become straight horizontal and the tires are like going down the street dragging and resisting moving forward. Or you could have other kind of combinations that also are not what you'd expect when you're driving a car, as opposed to a steering wheel. So imagine instead you were able to wrap the front two tires, uh, the ropes of those tires, around a mechanism that would simulate the concept of a steering wheel. So a steering wheel is much simpler of an abstraction. I just turn the wheel left to go left in my car. I turn the wheel right to go right in the car. So that's a very simple abstraction compared to having to manage all four tires. So that's kind of another example you might want to also show your students. So sometimes the actual underlying machine that we'll talk about can have erroneous state in, uh, possibilities. So the ability to turn your tires in the wrong way. Another uh, example that you might want to look at when you're talking about abstraction in everyday life, just think about when students wake up in the morning, where does abstraction you know, maybe affect their lives. And, and I ask them to think about when they're taking a shower, how do they turn on the water in their shower? So on the far left of this slide, there's a typical shower knob there. You know, if you turn it to the far, far left, you get hot water, and to the far right, you get colder water to eventually turning it off. So this is an abstraction that kind of models the underlying machine. In this case, the machine is the combination of hot water coming from a hot water heater mixed with colder water coming straight from the outside line. As with the previous example with steering wheel turning, you could get into erroneous states or undesired states. One undesired state with a shower would be being able to turn to the far left in the sense that you would have scolding hot water come out of your hot water heater directly to you. So in a sense there's actually a mechanism or a throttle built into most showers so you don't scold yourself. So th this idea of an abstraction is just turning the hot water knob there to a certain level and the underlying machine adjusts to that. As opposed to having some really strange device when you take a shower that would force you to go up into the hot water heater and, and turn a knob while you're trying to take a shower would be really inconvenient. So the two ideas here is a very simple abstraction plus an abstraction that prevents underlying erroneous states or undesirable states to be hit. So here on the next two slides are a few definitions. I won't go over all these but I highlighted in red some of the definitions that I think might be attractive to introducing to your students where abstraction is defined as a certain view of the problem that extracts the essential information and ignores the remainder of the information and that's common throughout many of these definitions. The essence of abstraction is to extract essential properties while omitting in essential details. So those themes run throughout most of these definitions here and even on the second slide the definition here according to the Oxford English Dictionary that abstraction is the act of separating thought and that abstraction is representing the essential features of something without including background or essential detail. So this next slide represents my favorite definition. It's by Gregor Kixalis in a paper that he wrote and he said abstraction is doing just what our small minds need, making it possible for us to think about important properties of our programs, that is its behavior, without having to think about all the entirety of the machinations that are used to represent that. So it's, it's the idea again of a way for humans to handle and understand complexity beyond what we'd be able to process that would, would make us unable to understand a certain system. So Kramer presents some definitions also in this paper that are interesting. The idea of withdrawing or removing something, leaving out of consideration something so that you can deal with a complex object while attending to the most essential properties. The general concepts of abstracting common properties and the common idea here being this 
extraction or, or highlighting of essential elements of a certain entity. Is abstraction only found in computer science? Well, we just answered that in some of the slides, for example, with the you know, steering wheel and the hot water heater. So what are some other examples that your students might be presented or they might come up on their own?